Welcome to the Neurological Emergencies module of this series. This is going to be a big area on the exam. A full 18 questions out of the 150 that count towards the final score on the CEN come from this area. So that's 12% of the exam. So yeah, this is an important area with a lot of material in it that we're going to cover in the next little while. As always, we're going to start with a challenge question. Which of the following symptoms is most consistent with the initial ED presentation of a patient with a cerebral contusion? A, impaired gag reflex. B, a Glasgow coma score of three. C, bilateral dilated non-responsive pupils. Or D, inability to remember commonly used words. Remember the question is, what is the initial uh, or the, which of the following symptoms is most present with initial ED presentation of the cerebral contusion. If you need to, pause it because I'm going to move on, but of course I will give you the answer in a bit. So let's talk about the concept of intracranial pressure. So of course, you know, your skull is a fixed bony vault. There's only so much room. If you add things into the skull like blood, increased, um, uh, uh, increased brain volume from swelling, you know, anything like that, of course, everything's going to um, increase, the volume's going to increase inside the skull, but since the skull won't expand, the pressure inside is going to increase. And obviously, that's increased intracranial pressure. Now, we know that normal intracranial pressure is any pressure less than um, 15 millimeters of mercury, okay? Um, so most adults have an intracranial pressure of somewhere around about 8 to 12 that's a pretty normal intracranial pressure. Um, kids have an even lower normal intracranial pressure just because, well, they have fontanelles and, and the skulls may not be completely sutures, may not be completely closed on the skull, I should say. So they may have intracranial pressures as low as zero to five as a normal variant. But regardless of the age, we generally say that any intracranial pressure, 15 millimeters of mercury or less, is, is well within normal ranges. We don't really consider an intracranial pressure elevated until it exceeds 20 millimeters of mercury. And once it gets above 20, we worry about it. Um, when it starts to get um, even higher, then we know that the, the pressure is going to begin to compress the blood vessels of the brain and lead to decreased oxygen delivery, decreased glucose delivery, and that's going to lead to a secondary cellular death. Now, if the pressure keeps climbing, up there in the brain gets higher and higher and everything gets compressed more, ultimately something's got to give. You can't keep, say, adding a blood from an intracranial bleed into the skull, um, you know, and, and the, the brain can keep getting squished and squished, but at a certain point something's got to give, right? And the skull won't explode, so what gives? Well, of course, the brain herniates. The brain is squeezed out of any hole it can find um, to make room up there. So it could be squeezed out of, a, out of a skull fracture, it can be squeezed over the midline, it can be pushed over the tutorial plate, and in a worst case scenario, it can even be squeezed out through the base of the skull in the forum magnum where the um, uh, spinal cord is. Once the brain is squeezed out of the skull or out of its place, we call that herniation. And that's like an extreme form of intracranial pressure. That's the, the very highest. You know, let me talk about that number 20 for a minute. So I remember I said that any intracranial pressure above 20 is considered elevated. Why 20? Was that just a randomly picked number? Well, well of course not. There's a science behind it. At 20 millimeters of mercury of pressure, capillaries begin to collapse in the body. And when the capillary collapses, of course, that reduces blood flow through that area, and that's going to reduce oxygen and glucose delivery. So that's why 20 was chosen, because at 20 you're going to start to see those, those capillaries collapse, and you're going to start to see that secondary brain damage from hypoxia and hypoglycemia and so on. And the reason I stress that is because not only is that going to be helpful in you remembering that for, for the uh, neurological emergencies, but you're going to see that number 20 pop up throughout the remainder of this um, uh, series. It doesn't matter what area of the body we talk about, capillaries collapse at 20. So any compartment in the body is going to have an elevated pressure anytime it exceeds 20, whether it's the ocular compartment, 
the thoracic compartment, the abdominal compartment, the muscle compartment. And we're going to be talking about all these different compartments throughout the remainder of this course. And you're going to notice there's a common thread. Regardless of what compartment I talk about, any pressure above 20 is elevated in every compartment in the body. So you don't need to memorize a whole bunch of compartment pressures for the exam. Just remember one number, 20 millimeters of mercury. And if, if any pressure in the body is above 20, that's an elevated uh, pressure for that compartment and it's gonna require treatment. Easy enough to remember, right? <music>